Okay, we're continuing where we left off. We had a, a transistor amplifier that we were designing using the BFP520F transistor from Infineon. This transistor has a maximum gain and noise figure and minimum noise figure when the current is biased to two milliamps and the drain voltage is set to two volts. I've downloaded the correct model file from Infineon that yields this bias point and the S parameters for this bias point. And I've placed it in this S2P block. I'm now going to run a simulation and we're going to look at the stability of the amplifier. Here I've plotted the mu factor or the edwards sensky stability criterion that says that if mu is greater than one, the amplifier is unconditionally stable. You can see here that mu is less than one and so the amplifier is potentially unstable. I'm going to add a resistor in order to stabilize it. Here I've added a 60 ohm shunt resistor on the output side of the amplifier and I'm going to rerun the simulation and we'll look at mu again. After running the simulation, you can see that mu is now greater than 1 at all frequencies. And so we can proceed with designing the matching network for the amplifier. Before designing the matching network, we need to de decide whether the amplifier can be considered to be unilateral or bilateral. If it's unilateral, it means that the signal only flows well in one direction, from input to output. If it's bilateral, then there's some interplay between the output and input. We can use the unilateral figure of merit shown here in the Guillermo Gonzalez Microwave Transistor Amplifier Design textbook, and we can calculate an inequality that will tell us if the amplifier is unilateral or not. In this case, if the amplifier has more than a few tenths of a dB of uh, uh, of this uh, parameter 1 over 1 plus u quantity squared or 1 over 1 minus u quantity squared, uh, then we know that the amplifier is going to have to be treated like a bilateral amplifier. Here I've taken those criteria and put them in this table and you can see that around 1 gigahertz the, the criteria is around 0.4 dB. This is most likely going to be enough to cause us a headache when we try to match the amplifier, and so we're going to have to consider the amplifier to be bilateral. If an amplifier is bilateral, then we can do a simultaneous conjugate match following the procedure shown here, where we calculate a simultaneous source and load reflection coefficient that would result in the amplifier being matched at both the input and the output. We calculate B1, B2, C1, and C2, and then plug them into our formulas for gamma MS and gamma ML. Gamma MS is the source impedance, is the source reflection coefficient that needs to be presented to the transistor for a conjugate match. Gamma ML is the load reflection coefficient that needs to be presented to the transistor for a simultaneous conjugate match. We can write equations in ADS for B1, B2, C1, C2, gamma MS, gamma ML, and then we can convert gamma MS and gamma ML into impedances. And we can match from 50 ohms, our source and load impedance, to these impedances, respectively at the source and at the load, in order to achieve our simultaneous conjugate match. For this particular transistor at 1 gigahertz, this means that we need to match from 50 ohms to an impedance of 13.6 plus J168.0 ohms. And at the load, we need to match from 50 ohms to an impedance of 18.3 plus J46.7 ohms. I'm going to design a couple of matching networks that will achieve this these impedances right now, and then I'm going to put them in the schematic. Okay, here I've designed that simultaneous conjugate match for the bilateral matching case, and you can see that we have from the input 
a shunt capacitor, 5.2 picofarads, a series inductor of 30.2 nanohenries, our DUT, we have our stabilizing shunt resistor, and then we have a series inductor of 11.25 nanohenries, a shunt capacitor of 4.2 picofarads, and our load. We can run the simulation, and we can now see that the device is well matched at one gigahertz, which was the intention, and it is achieving a gain that's close to the unilateral transducer gain, max, at one gigahertz. This again implies that the matching networks are both tuned very well. So the objective here is achieved. We have an input match that meets the goal of having a good return or a good reflection coefficient, an output match that has a good re reflection coefficient, and we have a gain that's approaching the maximum unilateral transducer gain. Now, this can be further optimized to perhaps have a wider bandwidth in the match by adding more elements to reduce the quality factor of the matching networks. We can also try using transmission lines instead of lumped components to achieve the same match. Those are all things that you can give a try in your own practice.